so it should be good to me. But last year we had flat tires in Texas, um, and then Talladega. I, I, I hate Talladega, so um, hopefully we can get through Texas without flat tires, and and I think that round of 12 will be you know okay. Um, Talladega scares me a lot, and then you know you, you can't afford to have any issues at, at the two tracks where you, you can control your own destiny. Have you just not found your groove yet, or are you just not comfortable in the draft, or what is it specifically that scares the hell out of you? No, I mean, I, I think that I could win at Talladega, but the problem is, is that there's 35 other guys that can win too. You know, whenever you go to Texas, I can win at Texas, and there's probably 10 to 15 other guys that can win at Texas. So, um, you know, it, it's just a, you, I mean, you're literally going to Vegas and you're, you're, you're gambling. That's what you're doing whenever you go to Talladega or to Texas. Does Talladega kind of bring out the cowboy in people? Uh, it brings out the gambling in people. That's what you do. Do you have more comfort coming into this race tonight knowing that you, your team has done like the win in advance backs against the wall twice last year? Does that give you more comfort over the like this? No. Not really. You know, I I was very uh, looking back at last year it was pretty magnificent how well the round of 16 went and you know I, I remember enter, entering into the playoffs last year saying you know Bristol is a place where you don't want to be fighting for that cut line because you never know what can happen and fortunately we got away with it we had a great Darlington a great Kansas and locked ourselves in and um, you know we we could go race for the win and not worry about Bristol uh, where this year we're in a completely different spot being on the cut line or close to the cut line um, we're going to have to have a, a banner day tomorrow. So, um, you know, there's a lot of guys that are in the same boat, though, and it's going to be a good race and, and probably a lot of drama on the cut line. Christopher, when they announced today that the spring race is going to be back on concrete, there was some hand-wringing online because everyone remembered, you know, that race having attendance issues to the point that, that they didn't even tell the grandstands in the corners back in 2019 um, you know obviously the experience the fan experience for the dirt race has been unique so how do you think Bristol keeps the fan experience for the spring race and concrete viable and something that excites people and they want to come to yeah I mean I, I my only spring Bristol concrete race was during COVID so uh, I don't know what the attendance was like before that um, I, I will say I don't think Bristol Dirt got a fair shake because it being on Easter weekend, I feel like any NASCAR race on Easter weekend, no matter where we're at, is probably uh, not going to look good on the grandstand side of things. So, um, yeah, I mean, Bristol Concrete I, I, is, is an amazing racetrack and my favorite on the schedule. So I think, you know, I, I don't like going to racetracks twice, but if we're going to do it, Bristol is a place to do it at. So, um yeah, I, I don't know about the attendance though. Yeah, does, the the cup side need, does this cup schedule need a dirt race? I, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter to me. Like I, I literally don't care. The only thing that I will say is, if you only have one race, like we've had the last couple of years, people don't take it serious, and and it, it's kind of a throwaway race. So, um, and it goes back to road courses. Whenever there's only Watkins Glen and Sonoma. It, People, it, it was like, okay, well, I'm not a road course guy. I'm not going to, who cares, right? You go out there and you, you get over it. But whenever you add more to the schedule, it makes it an emphasis for people to study and get better and put effort into. So, you know, I think having one dirt race, it makes it a throwaway event for a lot of people. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you added more, people would put more effort and resources into it, and it would become, it would t be taken a lot more seriously. You'll be down in history as the winner of the last Great. Yeah, I mean, that's fine by me. Fine by me, Bob. Uh, Christopher, your teammate Ty did the uh, tire test here in June. Um, have you talked with him about how that went, and how do you anticipate the new tire will uh, play a factor tomorrow? Uh, I have not actually talked to him about it. You know, I've been a part of several tire tests, and then whenever you come to the race weekend, it, it you know it's business like usual. So. Uh, you know, I had a flat right rear last year. I don't know if that was um, the same issue that a lot of people had. I, I don't even remember if I ran over something or what. But uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I guess I'm glad that there's a tire change, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Thanks. Sorry if you already answered this, but would the, did you guys do anything different over the week? You know, pit crew wise or training wise, more reps or anything like that to try and limit the mistakes that we've seen over the last two weeks? Uh, I mean, I've had conversation with my pit crew for sure, um, but nothing really changed you know I know that I have the right people going over the wall for me and uh, I, I've got to help them out you know I've done a poor job of hitting my mark stopping in the box and 
you know, whenever you're trying to do an eight and a half second pit stop, you have to do everything perfectly from the time that, you know, I cross that line and stop in my box, it has to be perfect, and I haven't done that yet. So, uh, you know, we're all in this together, and, and I, I got I got the right people doing it, so. How comfortable is the 13-point advantage? Um, not comfortable, but, you know, there, there's, I, I would, 13 points to probably 25 points feels the same. You know, if you have an issue, you're in trouble. So uh, it is what it is. There's a lot of people that are going to be racing hard for the cutoff line. And if, if any one of us have a, has a problem, you're going to be on the outside looking in. So um, just got to go out there and have a, have a flawless day tomorrow. Hey, everyone. Dalton Hopkins here with FrontStretch.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out one of the two videos next to me to see more of our racing content.